in 40 years of ministry we've moved house about seven or eight times and if you've ever done the same you'll know just how much chaos and stress that involves. When I was rector of Stoke-on-Trent we moved into a brand new purpose-built rectory. By then both our children had left home, our two pet cats had sadly died so for the first time Mary and I moved on our own. Well we looked at our brand new house and then we looked at our battered and bruised furniture. Our suite had been second hand 30 years earlier. Over the decades two boisterous children and two scratching cats had taken their toll. It was definitely time to renew them, to get new chairs for a new house. The other possession that was showing its age was my computer. It was still working but it was rather slow with an old operating system and not a lot of memory. Time to renew this too. But in a different way from how I'd renewed the sofa. Rather than buying a completely new machine, I took it to the local shop. The expert there took off with the redundant programs, removed a couple of viruses, upgraded the operating system, increased its RAM and memory and generally serviced the machine. And it got, when I got it back a week later, it was the same computer but now renewed, working both faster and more efficiently. As we emerge from this dreadful pandemic, we are urged to build back better. There is a desire to renew this broken world in which we live. Many people, especially young, don't want to go back to the same old ways as before. There's great concern about the way we have polluted our world with plastic. Our oceans are becoming cluttered with disused junk. Increasingly we are aware of the disaster effects of climate change. Carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are heating up our planet. Ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. We're in danger of making areas of the world uninhabitable. The need has inspired many to want to care for the earth. Next Tuesday, 22nd of April, is World Earth Day. An occasion where many across the globe come together to concentrate on climate action to restore our earth. Search the internet to find out more details. Now faith is sometimes criticised for diverting our attention away from the very real needs of this life. The accusation is that belief in another world results in a neglect of this one. Well, if you see renewal as the same way as I renewed the sofa, then there is indeed a problem. For if this life is only a preparation for the next, then indeed, why bother about it? This is only a training ground for heaven. This thinking lies behind much of the so-called rapture theology. God will snatch a few faithful souls from this world into his kingdom and then the old universe will be destroyed. So why bother about it? In politics the same way of thinking lies behind the ideology of many dictators such as Hitler and Stalin and others. The new order is coming. Everything and everyone who belongs to the old order is to be destroyed. By contrast, the Bible sees renewal much more in the way that I refreshed my computer 
rather than the way I knew the sofa. In the New Testament, it is clear that the resurrection of Jesus is a turning point in the history of the cosmos. His rising marks God's promise to make all things new. Let's consider today's reading from Luke's Gospel. Luke tells the story of the risen Jesus appearing in Jerusalem. Jesus' followers are hidden away from prying eyes. The eleven are there, now minus Judas of course, but we're also told there are other companions. That probably includes the women and indeed our Lord's mother as well. They are discussing the report that Clopas has brought about the encounter of Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Could it be true? Could Jesus be alive? Then suddenly he is there in their midst. He greets them in his old familiar way. Shalom, peace. The disciples are described as startled, frightened, terrified. Small wonder they think they are seeing a ghost, an insubstantial phantom. However, in this account, Luke is at pains to show that Jesus is real. Jesus tells them, look at my hands and feet. Touch and see, he tells the gathering. Then, as if this is not enough, he asks for something to eat. He is given and eats a piece of cooked fish. The risen Lord may have been transformed, but he is the same Lord who walked with them in Galilee. His body may have been resurrected, but the wounds in his hands and feet are still visible. Since they ate together at the Last Supper, his body may have been glorified, but he still shares a meal with them. In other words, there is continuity as well as change. Luke wants to make this perfectly clear. Although the resurrection is about new life, it is the transformation and not the destruction of the old. As the great theologian Thomas Aquinas wrote, grace does not destroy but perfects nature. Does not destroy but perfects. This applies both to the resurrected body of Christ, but also to the whole of the created cosmos. It is because the world has an eternal destiny that it matters how we treat it now. We cannot and do not create the kingdom. The 19th century liberals who thought they could build God's kingdom were mistaken. But it is the world in which we live and work that is the world that will be transformed by God's glory. It is this universe that is the raw material for God's eternal kingdom. So rather than detract, faith makes us concentrate more on this life. For it matters that we care for the environment. It is important to establish justice and peace in this world. It is essential that we do all we can to ensure that every life is fulfilled and fruitful. For this is the world that God will not destroy but perfect by his resurrection, power and glory. Amen.